Dearest Texas history scholars, I hope you're having a wonderful day today. We are going to create a study guide for Unit 9. Unit 9 is about modernizing Texas. A few major events happened in Unit 9, and the first of those events is the Galveston Hurricane. The Galveston Hurricane happened in 1900. That's the first major event in our notes. The next major event in our notes is that there was an oil boom. We're going to call this industrial expansion. But we know that that also means oil. That's the second major event. The discovery of oil at Spindletop happened in 1901. The next thing that happens is World War I, and that started in 1914, and it goes until 1918. The next thing that happens is that there is a series of reform movements. These reform movements bring a lot of change to Texas. Okay, let's go back and look at our Galveston hurricane. This was actually the worst natural disaster in United States history. Part of that is because there was no weather technology. They had no idea that that could or would happen. And so it was a little bit shocking. Um, well, very shocking. We know that in response to this, the city of Houston built a seawall to, to protect the city from future hurricanes, future flooding. And when they were rebuilding the city, they used something that was called a commission-style government. I'm going to put that up here. And that's just where multiple people are in, char in charge of different projects so that it's not just one mayor. It's like several committees working all at the same time to accomplish significantly more. That was adopted by bigger cities. And people were able to get more done when they adopted a commission-style government like the city of Galveston did. We know that investors moved to Houston, so that would be like an economic, um, an economic impact of the hurricane. And then Houston becomes the, the biggest city in Texas. I think on your test it says something about inland. So they're moving further away from the shore into the city of Houston, making Houston the largest city in Texas. The next thing that happens is industrial expansion. We had the spindle top gusher. We call it a gusher because they didn't have enough technology to properly gather the oil, so it kind of just went everywhere. It wasted like probably millions of dollars in today's money, but they didn't really have an option because they didn't know what to do once they hit the oil. Um, that happened in 1901, and then we see a lot of technological advancements Oil and industry grew as it needed to. So then there were some advancements in a lot of fields, but especially in oil because of Howard Hughes. If 
This guy is known as Howard Hughes Sr. His son was also famous. So to clarify that that's the senior. And Howard Hughes Sr. contributed to industrial expansion by creating the rotary drill bit, which drilled through rock um, at an angle and it was super revolutionary at the time. No one had thought of anything like that. Um, also in industrial expansion and oil, we see a boom and bust cycle. I'm gonna draw a little um, a picture for this. So a boom and bust cycle is when things go up really quickly and then boom, they crash. So boom and bust cycle, that's important. And then boom and bust cycles led to a series of cities popping up all over Texas. And we call these boom towns because they were somewhat temporary. Like in our um, introduction, we looked at Desdemona and a guy was on a horse and um, you saw like a lot of cars and a lot of businesses, but now it's a ghost town and there's nothing there. And that's because it was an oil boom town. Um, a lot of cities had increased population. Oh, that's a P, population. And then this increased the population for the entire state of Texas. Okay, and then uh, let's talk about let's talk about World War One next. World War I started and the United States was super reluctant to join in because they thought that it would lead to a lot of deaths. And it, in fact, did. The United St States joined in 1917. The causes for the um, World War I, or it's also known as the Great War, um, Sometimes we remember the causes of this by using the term Maine, and that's an acronym. And we can pause the video and talk about it, but for right now, I just want you to know that there were main causes of World War I. Uh, this led to a really big change in society because when men were away at work or at fighting, the women had to go to work. So there were changing roles of women during World War I and also World War II. And all of these led to a lot of reforms regarding women's rights. So women start to fight they're not literally fighting, they're just like pushing politicians and being very loud about and having protests regarding women's rights. But specifically the right to suffrage. Women fight for rights. Suffrage also means voting. They did earn the right to vote in the 19th Amendment. And that happened in 1920 that women earned the, uh, the voting rights. There was a guy, a governor that especially helped promote reforms, and his name was... Governor James Hogg. He was instrumental because he helped create the Texas Railroad Commission. 
the Texas Railroad started out protecting customers and workers of railroads, but then they ended up expanding that to all areas, but especially oil. Also during this time, oh, wait, we should put that the goal is to protect workers, which was also the goal of the progressive movement. Um, okay, there's another amendment that was passed. I should have said this first. It was the 18th Amendment. And that is about temperance. It's also known as prohibition, and it leads to organized crime. It's the banning of alcohol. So I'm gonna make a little drawing here. Pretend like that's alcohol, okay? And then, boom, it's not allowed after the 18th Amendment. That was eventually repealed by the 21st Amendment, but that's much later. Okay, I think that's it. Good luck on your test. Let me see if I can like zoom out for a second. There we go. All right, good luck on your test. Have a great day.